Hi, Midland Alliance Church. Welcome to our third online service. We just want to send our love and pray blessings over you and your family today. So today is Palm Sunday. And on Palm Sunday, we commemorate when Jesus rode triumphantly back into Jerusalem on a donkey shortly before his death. And this was a big deal. You can picture crowds there, and they're cheering, and they're waving palm branches, all in honor of their King Jesus. So let's do the same today. Let's worship our King Jesus together. Today's scripture reading, Joel will share. Isaiah 41, 10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Have a good Sunday. There is a truth older than the ages there is a promise of things yet to come there is one born for our salvation jesus there is a light that overwhelms the darkness there is
Welcome to Midland Alliance Church's Sunday service. We're just so happy that you are tuning in with us today. If you happen to be here for the first time, a special welcome to you. I'm Rebecca. I'm the Connections Coordinator here at the church. Um, at MAC, we just love our community. So something that we do every week is we celebrate first-time guests by pledging a donation to a local charity on your behalf. So you can just go to our website, which is machurch.ca, click on the I'm New card, and just fill out that uh, contact card that will pop up. And in one easy step, you can connect with the church and also support a local charity. Uh, speaking of our website, that's sort of the go-to place to find out more about who we are as a church, our beliefs, our denomination. It's also where you can go to catch up on a sermon that you may have missed, signed up, sign up for a virtual life group, and you can also contact us if you, if you happen to have a need or a prayer request. Another way of staying connected is by uh, it, liking and following our Facebook page. So if you haven't already done that, you can just go to Midland Alliance Church, uh, like and follow, and then also you can invite your friends. So if you, you know, once you get to the Mac Facebook page, you'll see a little heading that says community, and just under that, you can invite uh, your friends to also engage with us on Facebook. Uh, stay tuned. This week, we will be posting a daily devotional uh, as we prepare for Easter next weekend. Just so you know what's happening here at MAC uh, this upcoming weekend, we will be having a Good Friday service uh, this upcoming Friday. It will be a communion service where we uh, reflect together on uh, the sacrifice of the cross. So you can check that out on uh, our Facebook page or at machurch.ca on Friday at 10 a.m. And we'll be meeting again on Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday at 10 o'clock, where we will, we will be celebrating together uh, the resurrection of our King. So we look forward to um, meeting with you again um, next weekend. 
So at this time, uh, we are going to be offering again this week a special program just for kids. So parents and kids, if you can find another screen, another spot for uh, the kids to take in their own program, that would be great. We just wanted to thank uh, Faithville Media for producing um, this great programming for kids. And um, we hope that you enjoy that. Well, it's the first Sunday of the month, and here at MAC, we give together as part of our worship um, on the first Sunday of the month. You know, God challenges us to give our first uh, to his work in and through the local church. So if you'd like to give today, uh, you can do so. Uh, you can e-transfer uh, to office at machurch.ca. You can uh Drop off your envelope just here at the church. We have a mailbox on the front uh, at the front. And you can also give now using Tithely, uh, using your debit or credit card. So you just go to our website, machurch.ca, click give, and you'll be directed uh, to that platform so you can give today. Well, thanks very much. We just hope that you enjoy the rest of the service. Well, hello, everyone. Great to connect with you once again online for our service here on this Palm Sunday, a very exciting uh, time of the year. We're in our series, Jesus Is, and we're looking at ancient prophecies about him from the Old Testament, what they said about him and how he fulfilled those. Last week, we looked at this idea of exile. Jesus is exile. God loves the exile. That was the first point we looked at. He cares enough to notice them, but he actually goes beyond that, taking action on their behalf. He reaches out to them, challenges authorities for them, and brings deliverance to them. So we ask the question, have I personally experienced God's love for me? And then secondly, Jesus identifies with the lonely and exiled. He was forced to leave his home country as a young, young Boy, he had to stay apart for a season, not only as he began his human life, but also when he started his ministry many years later. He spent 40 days alone in the desert. Jesus knows what it's like to feel all by yourself, to feel like you're cut off from everybody else. So he can identify with us when we feel alone, when we feel hurt or even abandoned. He relates with you. More than that, he is actually with you no matter what. So it's really a prayer that we prayed, which is, help me, Jesus, to reach out to those who are in need, maybe because they're alone at this time. In particular, it's a good challenge for us. God reaches out to us in our loneliness, and we can reach out to others, being an extension of his hands and feet. So today, as we said, it's Palm Sunday, a very exciting time of the year, an exciting day in the calendar, in the Lenten calendar, and commemorating, commemorating Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And this is the beginning of Holy Week for Christians. It's called Palm Sunday because the people, as Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, they actually waved palm branches and laid them on the ground in Jesus' path to welcome him into Jerusalem. The context, he's coming into the city, and he knows what awaits him, and he's told his disciples what is going to happen. That is, that he will be arrested, he'll be tried, he'll, be, uh, he'll suffer, he'll, he'll ultimately die on the cross. And they, they're not having any of this. They don't believe him. So this is the context. We'll pick it up in Matthew chapter 21. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you'll find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. So Jesus is en route to Jerusalem with his disciples, He's coming from the east, and they're approaching the town of Bethphage, and he sends two of them, two of his disciples, to go into the village to get some transportation for him, and it's a donkey and it's colt. That is the, you know, the sort of the kid of the donkey. 
And he says, say that the Lord needs them. Although Jesus didn't trumpet his divine identity early in his ministry, in these later stages he is more and more open about his nature and authority. Let's pick it up in verse 4. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a donkey. Now, Matthew explains why this is happening. It's the fulfillment of another ancient prophecy from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9 and verse 9 that the Messiah would indeed arrive and bring salvation to his people. But how would he arrive? Riding on a donkey. The donkey was sometimes ridden by rulers in times of peace. Jesus was showing people what kind of a Messiah he was. He was not going to be a military conqueror. Uh, Rather, he was going to be a peaceful leader. But still, it's just a donkey, right? Uh, It doesn't have the prestige of a horse. You know, when you see a horse next to a donkey like this, you can see, you know, one is pretty pretty majestic looking. The other one is not so much, you know, sort of on the other end of the scale. Um, I remember growing up just down the road from uh, the Windsor Raceway, which was a horse racing track on uh, Highway 18 in Windsor, Ontario, and uh, it's it's now torn down. It's been torn down for a number of years, but there would be regular horse races uh, there, and my grandfather came from England when I was a boy, and he actually took me there to watch uh, some of this horse racing, and it was a lot of fun, and the horses, of course, are something to behold with their speed and might and majesty. They're a prestigious animal. A donkey is not. A donkey is lowly. And like the prophecy says, it's a very humble animal. It's kind of like a standard issue, every man's vehicle. Um, Like maybe you've had a modest vehicle or maybe have a a modest vehicle at this time. Uh, As a young man, I had a 1987 Volkswagen Fox, which I loved, but, you know, was certainly nothing in the way of uh, flashy or extravagant. Later on, I had a 1992 Dodge Shadow, and the whole interior roof had sort of ripped out, and you just sort of see the exposed kind of cardboard, bulletin board type uh, material underneath there. It was not pretty, but it did the trick, but certainly on the humble side, sort of like a donkey. And Jesus is fulfilling prophecy as he comes in on this donkey, written written hundreds of years earlier, as he comes in this way. He's so much greater than any president, religious leader, or celebrity, and yet he is lowly, he is meek, he is humble. So this is the first point we want to make today. The way of Jesus is humility. The Bethlehem birth, of course, was marked by humility. A humble, lowly birth in a manger amongst animals. He associated with the lowly as a mark in his ministry. He served folks who were considered low, outcast, you know, of of ill repute, whether it was the Canaanite woman, a blind person, uh, tax collectors, you know, and so on. And he would reach out to these folks. He would minister to them, befriend them. He told those that he healed to not go and make a big show of it, to not go and tell everyone about it. And now arriving to Jerusalem, his final week on earth, what will be the pinnacle of his life and ministry, where he's going to meet his destiny, the cross. And he begins with a ride on a donkey. To follow in the way of Jesus is to follow in the path of humility. It's to refuse to give in to the temptation to grab for more power, to grab for more position, because that is not the way of humility. It's to refuse to become someone who manipulates others so that you can get ahead. Rather, as the prophet Micah says, 
We want to be those who do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with their God. That's the way of humility that the Lord Jesus calls us to and exemplifies for us here. Let's continue in verse 8. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So although Jesus didn't grab a megaphone to announce his coming, many still realize there's something special happening here. When he stopped in nearby Bethphage, people in Jerusalem likely got word of it. Only days earlier, he had raised Lazarus from the dead in Bethany. And more than ever, people were hearing about this Jesus of Nazareth. And many Israelites were looking, you see, for their long-awaited Messiah. Although he hadn't led a military charge against the ruling Romans, for over three years now, Jesus had taught about the kingdom of God. He had healed the sick. He had delivered the oppressed. He had expanded his influence. Maybe he really was the anointed one. Maybe he was Israel's long-awaited Messiah. And so they came to welcome him into Jerusalem. They took off their coats and they laid them on the path before him as he came into town. They cut palm branches from the surrounding trees and they laid them on the path or they waved them in the air. And then they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Quoting yet another messianic passage. And we'll look at it here from Psalm 118, verse 25. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Save us, translated from the Hebrew word, Hosanna, which literally means save, help, rescue. Hosanna in the highest, very similar to glory, in, glory to God in the highest, which of course was pronounced by the angels at the birth of Jesus. And now the people mirror this announcement, not realizing that he was already in the tail end of his life. And they say, praise God for the son of David. Of course, David was Israel's most celebrated king, and the promised Messiah was supposed to come from his line to share in the kingly role of their beloved David. Notice how Jesus doesn't shut them down as they make these proclamations. He's not telling them to be quiet. He's not denying their claims. Rather, he's allowing it to happen. He is actually welcoming it. So here's the point we want to make. Humility embraces the call. Humility embraces the call. Yes, Jesus was born in a stable. Yes, he connected with the poor and the outcast. Yes, he came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. But he is fully aware of the fact that now, more than ever, he is being lifted up as the long-awaited Messiah. As the people wave their palm branches, as they shout out, Hosanna for the Son of David, people are seeing him as the Savior of the world, and he is embracing that role. He didn't ask for the spotlight, but he knew what he had to do. He knew what he was called to do. It was going to be beyond difficult, and it would be wrought with suffering. Consider the Garden of Gethsemane, the night Jesus was betrayed and arrested. Just before that happens, he, of course, is in the Garden of Gethsemane and asking his disciples to stop and, and pray a while with him. And, of course, they fall asleep because they're tired and worn out, but he prays and he labors and he prays and he's asking God if at all possible that this cup of suffering could be passed from him. Nevertheless, he submits to his father's will, but his suffering, his anguish is so heavy in that moment that the gospels tell us he actually sweat drops of blood. So embracing his 
role, embracing his call, is going to cost him everything. And yet this was the path for the Messiah. This was the path for the suffering servant, Jesus. This was the path for the humble king. So getting back to our text, Matthew goes on to say that the entire city gets in on what's happening here. Talking about this Jesus guy who came riding in on a donkey, maybe, just maybe, he's our Messiah. Maybe he's our Savior. And many people would have given up, you know, in Jesus' shoes. They would say, you know what, this is just too big. It's too hard. It's too public. It's too much pressure. But not Jesus. He humbly steps forward into his calling and destiny. Sometimes we get the whole humility thing backwards because we think if we're humble, we're just going to sort of hide away and not let anybody notice us or, or see us, anything like that. It's true that being humble means you don't need a spotlight. You don't require, you know, the center of attention. You don't have to be that person. But real humility at the same time refuses to give in to pressure to, you know, conform in any way, even pressure to be pushed to the side. Uh, real humility refuses to back away from a challenge, even, if, even one that seems insurmountable, right? Because real humility actually recognizes that all things are possible with God. And more than that, God can enable me to do all things, right? So if I'm truly humble, I'm actually not even looking at myself and my capacities, my capabilities. I'm looking at the grace of God that can operate in and through me for his glory and the good of others. So humility actually steps up to respond even in the face of pressure and difficulty and obstacle. Consider at this very difficult time in not only our country, of course, but the world, our frontline workers, those first responders who are, uh, you know, essential service. You know, they need to do their job in order for us to still function as a society at this time where we're all told to stay home and, and sort of self-isolate. And these first responders are putting themselves on the line. And think about uh, the grocery store. And, of course, this is somewhere where you still have to go, one of the pl few places you're still allowed to go. And I'm not allowed to go because my wife says, if you go, you're going to spend too much time there. You're going to go down too many aisles. You're going to touch too many groceries, and on and on and on. So I don't get to do it, but she does. And I'm told how it's this crazy operation now where everybody's sort of spaced out and now people are having to wait outside the store and there's tape on the ground outlining everything and it's very controlled as it needs to be. And you have these plexiglass shields that have been in installed to protect cashier and customer and all the rest of it. But think about these cashiers who are serving, working in this regard, um, giving their time, giving their energy to do, to, you know, to, to, to sell groceries, to stock groceries. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible role that they're humbly doing, humbly stepping up to at this time, and we're thankful. Consider even more our healthcare workers. Think about those, those nurses and doctors. Uh, a good friend of mine, uh, his, his fiance is a emergency room nurse, and he showed me a, a picture of her in her full hazmat suit getup with the, something like this, with the, the mask, but also the extra, you know, sort of clear uh, covering mask over the top of that, and they have to suit up like this every time they go in to work because the level of risk, of course, with folks in the hospital who have the virus Right? And so they have to do everything they can to protect and so that they can still do their job for you and for me. They're serving in this incredible way with great humility. 
at a time where we have a lot of challenge, a lot of difficulty, and there's a lot of risk due to this COVID-19 pandemic. We have folks who are stepping up, humbly serving in the face of the challenge. And I'm just thankful, and I'm sure you are as well. And let's continue to lift up all of our first responders in prayer and remember them. So as we wrap up the message here today, the first point is that Jesus' way is humility. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for humbly serving us. Because if he uh, wasn't able to do that, we wouldn't have an Easter to remember and celebrate. But thank God that he humbly gave himself for you and for me. His way is humility. Secondly, humility embraces the call. Humility embraces uh, the role, the job, if you will, no matter uh, how hard it might be. So it's really a question for you to consider. Where do I need to step up to the plate? Is there an obstacle? Is there a challenge that I'm facing that perhaps is intimidating, perhaps is, is difficult? But if I'm truly humble, rather than sort of shying away from that challenge, can I step up to it, trusting in the grace of God to uh, use me to meet the challenge? And it could be related to a, a relationship problem, or it could be a job or, or financial issue, or some kind of other personal issue. You, you can think of what your situation might be. But instead of sort of shying away, instead of giving in to fear and intimidation, um, Let's embrace that challenge in humility, you see. And we're not being too proud uh, to change. We're open to change. We're open to flexing. And that's, of course, part of humility as well. Whatever it takes for me to do what I need to do in this moment uh, in order to fulfill this calling, that's what humility does. That's what humility is all about. Well, let's take a minute and pray together. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the chance to connect once again online. Uh, Lord, thank you for all those boys and girls, those men and women who've been able to watch this, listen to this. And Lord, we thank you for your incredible example of humility as we think, Lord Jesus, about you coming into Jerusalem that Palm Sunday, riding that lowly, donkey, and really stepping into your destiny there, which would uh, shortly after amount to a brutal death on the cross on our behalf. God, we just thank you that you had the humility to serve us in this incredible way. We pray, Lord, we'll be able also to walk in humility. And we know, Lord, part of humility means embracing the calling you've put on our lives, uh, embracing the challenge that is before us. God, not shying away, not giving into fear and intimidation, but rather trusting in you. We know you will give us the grace to do what you need us to do, what you've called us to do. So God, I pray for that person watching or listening today with whatever challenge they might be facing, God, that they would have the humility to step into that and trust you to uh, give them whatever they need to uh, meet that challenge. God, we pray your blessing, your continued blessing and protection over our frontline workers. We think about those grocery store workers and cashiers. We think about those um, health care workers. God, we think about everyone who is really on the front lines in this moment. And we just pray, the Lord, that you will watch over them, that you will protect them. We pray, God, that there can be forward progress. Thank you for what's already happened. We pray there can be more that happens in the days and weeks and months ahead. Lord, we pray we might be surprised by positive developments happening uh, soon, sooner rather than later. And we give you thanks, God, that even in this time, you are doing great things and you'll continue to do great things. Thank you, God, for this time together. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Well, thanks so much for joining us once again here today. And just encourage you to stay connected with us at mhurch.ca or on the Facebook page. And we're just so happy to uh, connect with you and serve you in this way. We want to pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer as we close our service. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you folks. We'll see you next time.